Hey guys, here's another tutorial. So today we're going to be talking about creating and destroying game objects. We're going to be creating objects in two different ways, and that's going to be both instantiating and creating prefabs. So first what we're going to do is we have an empty scene here. So go ahead and create a new scene. I'm going to make an empty game object. Okay, this is going to this is going to be the game object that has our scripts. So we're going to create a new uh, component by clicking Add Component. Go ahead and just call it Creator, or something else if you want. Create an ad, and let's open this in Mono Develop. Okay, so we have these two basic functions. We're also going to add a new one. We're going to call it Create. Okay, actually let's call that Create Primitive. Okay. To create a primitive, all I have to do is do game object .create primitive, and then primitive types, or sorry, primitive type, and then one of these. We're going to use capsule, but you could do whatever you want. Okay, you'll notice that these options are the same as these options. Okay, so create primitive. Now we need to call this function. This function is created but it's never called so we're going to call it in start so just like this now uh, let's disable the script so I can show you if I play you'll see nothing happens but with the script enabled when I press play it will create a capsule okay so let's say you want to do stuff with this well let's create a public uh, variable I'll call it go, which is short for game object. And we're going to say go equals this. Actually, we can make this public so we can see it in the editor. So go to game, make sure maximize on play is off. Press play. And here's our capsule. Now, if we go to our game object, it has a. Oh, here. Let me restart this. Okay, so we have our script. And then we have go, which is our game object. Right now there's no game object, but when we press play, you'll see that it creates it, and then here it is, capsule. Okay? So this is the object created by our create primitive. Now let's talk about something else really quickly. Uh, before we get into destroying this game object, um, I'm going to change it from start to update. Now, if I did this, uh, update is a loop that gets called every frame. So if I tried to play this, it would just create a whole bunch of capsules, as you can see. We don't want that. We only want it sometimes. So we're going to do it in update, but only when the user presses a key down. We're going to use. Um, Let's just use the enter key, okay, or return key. So we're going to check every frame, but if the user presses the return key during that frame, we're going to create a primitive. Okay, so let's try that again. Now when I start, it won't uh, show anything until I press return. And there you go. And I could create more too, as you can see over here. Okay, so now that we have a create, let's do a destroy. So we're going to have another condition here, if input dot get key down, let's say key code dot backspace. Okay, so when the backspace key is hit, we're going to do something else. Let's call this uh, remove game object. Okay, so remove game object. And to remove a game object, all you need to do is call destroy and pass it the game object. Okay. Oops. Remove game object. Okay, and let's go ahead and test that out. Okay, so enter, 
creates it and backspace removes it. Now, what happens if um, you backspace again? Nothing happens. Cool. Okay. So now that's how you create primitives, right? Very easily. You just say go equals game object create primitive. Um, now let's try and create something else. So we're going to create uh, or instantiate rather. So we're going to create a prefab and a prefab is something you make in the editor. So I'm going to make a prefab. Let's just do something. Uh, I'll have a cylinder and maybe I'll give it a material. Okay, so this can be whatever you want. So if you wanted to create something, uh, you would first make it in the editor without playing. And then you'll turn it into a prefab. Okay, so here's the prefab that I have. And this can be whatever you want, but we're going to create this. Okay, so you're going to go create prefab. I'm going to call this whatever you want. I'm going to call it prefab. And then you're going to drag the object from the hierarchy into the prefab. And that's going to create this prefab. So what that means is if I wanted one of those red disks again, then all I have to do is drag it in. There it is. Or another one. Or another one. All right. So here it is. Now we can actually create these from code. So what we're going to do is go back into the script. Now to create a prefab, we have to have a connection to the prefab or else it won't know what we want to make. So we're going to make a new public variable uh, game object called prefab. Save that and go back to the editor. You'll see that game object now has a new field called prefab. So we're going to drag our prefab into this and there we go. Now to create this object, uh, here's some of the code. So you're going to say instantiate and if you don't know what instantiate means, I highly recommend you read the, um, the reference. So the scripting API. It's going to be object.instantiate, or I guess game object.instantiate. Um, it's the same thing. Okay. So game object.instantiate, and it's going to take a original and a position and a rotation if you want. Okay. So go ahead and read up on that if you would like. So let's just do this very simply. We're going to instantiate just the prefab. Okay, so now we're going to undo this code that we had up here, create primitive. Let's create prefab instead, because prefabs are more fun. Okay, and we're going to say go equals this. Okay, so when I press play, oh, um, when I press play and press enter, you'll see we get our prefab. Okay, so that's how you do that. 